Hey guys, thanks for checking into this video. So you want to swap or you're interested in swapping uh, your 67-ish era Cadillac uh, to an LS. Um, it's no easy feat, man. It takes a lot of work. Uh, I'm going to show you guys what I had to do on the chassis side and what I had to do to the engine and the transmission to make them fit. Um, I am using an LSA 6.2 out of a CTSV, like a second gen, and the 6L90 transmission from that same car, which is a behemoth. Well, let me show you the frame. So I'll show you guys a before picture too, so you can tell what the heck I had to do here. But if you're looking at yours, you already know this is a lot of work. Um, so stock, it's not, it doesn't have this plate here or this bar. It's all um, big chunky K member. This is all relief now. I cut this and boxed it and whatever, but so it comes down here stock and your motor mounts mount like right here. And then it continues across this with a big, you know, K member, whatever you want to call it, to join both sides together. And then also this is, you know, um, a lot bulkier in factory form. Um, <clears throat> now you probably won't have to do this uh, unless you're doing the LSA swap like I am because that has the low mount alternator over here and the low mount AC compressor over here. Um, probably with truck accessories you'd get away with just clearancing this uh, front portion of the K-member and using a front sump oil pan. You'd still would have to do something to get the strength back here across the front of the frame but I don't think you'd have to notch all this um, and you could probably do something more common with the mounts. I'm not 100% sure there. This is just what I had to do. These are from uh, Rough Stuff Off-Road, I think. They're for like a Jeep, a uh, small block Chevy swap in a Jeep. Um, and they came with these little brackets here, which mount. They got the standard three-hole small block Chevy mount, um, which also accommodates the ICT billet plates that are on the LS motor. Um, so this side, I think it's actually, yeah, this says driver side DS. So this one's on correctly. The other side, I had to flip upside down. Um, and I had to tap another hole in it right here to get the mount where it needed to be but so now I'll show you too like this is why I had to mount the or box the frame so much got that big AC compressor and the alternator very low um, and so also this is this a JEGS front sump oil pan for an LS 7 quart uh, pan I did weld a, a drain plug to it back here because the side mount one kind of gets, it's almost right up against the frame. So I wanted that to make that a little easier for the guy when he's doing oil changes. Um, but yeah, the factory, the factory Cadillac uh, pan and motor mount setup is pretty crazy. It's, it mounts, the, the motor mounts are like very forward on the engine. They're like almost where this alternator is. It's like a motor plate almost location. Um, and I believe, I don't have the, that here anymore, but I believe the pan was like this thin at the front and at the back. And it had like a middle sump because your steering linkage goes through here. And then obviously that K member went through here. It's definitely a weird setup. Not easy to adapt to without, you know, pretty heavy mods here. Um, but that's what I did. It, it's, it is offset 11 sixteenths of an inch to the driver's side because that AC compressor and when the lines are on it is so close to that spring pocket. Um, 
but yeah I mean it's it's there now and it took a long time but you know it is possible um, another thing that I had to overcome was this car is going to be on airbags so he can you know he wants to slam it down on the ground well that 6L90 trans is so deep so tall that the stock tunnel on the Cadillac was not tall enough um, and for me to even mount it in there with the stock tunnel the the trans pan was like five inches below the size of the frame rail so I had to tunnel this thing had to tunnel the body so that's a that's a Chris Alston race car chassis uh, tunnel 4L80 style tunnel that I grafted into the Cadillac um, it looks kind of wonky right now because or from this angle because the floor is two inches higher on the driver's side to accommodate the exhaust so it's just looks low here and high here but that's just how they are um, and so I tunneled the whole car the whole inside of the car all the way to the back and I had to do this because that trans is so tall and that pinion I mean that uh, yoke on the trans is so high that the drive shaft would have hit the factory floor like immensely I'll show you a picture of that thing sitting in there with the floor cut out and how tall it needs to be to fit um, but this way now with the tunneled I can he'll be able to air the car all the way down the drive shaft won't hit the floor and and uh, you know everything should be pretty happy so yeah that was a big job you guys I ain't gonna lie getting the LS in this thing would have been easier if it was like truck accessories and it was a 5.3 or whatever you'd still need that front sump oil pan I think so this hole is the like one of the mounting points for the radiator support and so the back of the radiator is like right here and I know my crank pulley comes over this bar just a little bit I have like three inches between the two of them so I got just enough room where I'll be able to put an electric radiator fan on there um, and the rest of it's going to be pretty tight you know you get a big you get an old big car like this and you think oh, I'm gonna have all kinds of room but it's a different story man you got that 6L90 and that LSA with the blower on it I mean that thing's going to be up against all this factory climate control HVAC stuff and then all the way as forward as it as I could or rearward as I could get it to fit the fans and the radiator and stuff so it's a project booyah don't mind these unpainted spindles I know they stick out like a sore thumb I'm gonna paint them it's just kind of mocking stuff up but here she is boys the 6.2 LSA with a 6L90 mounted in a 67 Cadillac Fleetwood I'll show you guys the clearance we got here on some things this, this is just a cardboard little cover I put on the AC lines the ports for those and what dust and dirt and everything else get in there but she's close check out the gap on the exhaust manifold it's pretty tight that's the factory CTSV manifold on this side alternator sunk in there a little bit and then this is the C6 Corvette manifold over here also a very snug fit um, I gotta get a heat shield for that I threw the caddy engine cover on there. Looking good though, man. This is the first time I've seen it in here. All right, I'm going to lift this up now and I'll show you guys underneath. There's that Jeg's front sump oil pan. Plenty of room now that I sectioned the frame out. I think you can drop the pan down pretty easily. 
There's a maybe a question here whether the flange would hit that AC condenser, I mean a compressor bracket little nub there, but I think it's minor. And this is where the steering linkage will go through. You can see the the steering arm here off the spindle will be the linkage will just be moving back and forth right through here. And then the big old 6L90 tucked up in there. I still have to paint some of the mount here. I realized I forgot to paint the piece with the Sharpie mark on it, but got lots of clearance. It's kind of hard to show, but that Chris Alston chassis works tunnel, tra uh, trans tunnel and drive shaft tunnel. Save the day there. There it is, man. I gotta make the shift linkage work and the trans cooler lines work, and uh, you know, it's just one step at a time. Getting it all ready. But it's coming along nicely. Very happy with it to see it this far along so far. A lot of work to get right here. And I do believe we're still good with the factory hood, the height of the hood, and um, you know, the radiator support, all that stuff's going to fit fine. I get the disc brake kit out here. I got to paint this stuff up. It's all raw, raw steel right now. And we still got boxes of parts over here to put in, but and the nine inch rear housing just showed up so I can make a jig for the stock caddy rear to get that nine inch in there. That's kind of next. So cool. There you go, guys. That's how you fit the LS motor in the 67 era. I'm not even sure what other years, but just a lot of custom work, man.